James Harvey Newell Russell. I'm the new math science teacher. The football coach? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Pop Culture 101. I'm Cordero McMurray, and we have a special guest. You might have seen this actor in plays in local theaters around the coastal bend, or you've seen him in the trailer for the new film, 12 Mighty Orphans. Joining me is actor Bailey Roberts. Bailey, what's popping, man? How's it going? Hey, good morning. How's it going? Doing good. Now, you're in this new film, 12 Mighty Orphans. It's supposed to release June 18th. Tell me about this film and your character. Essentially, back in the Great Depression era, uh, 30s going into the 40s, uh, a Masonic home run by the Freemasons up in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, ran this orphanage, and it was a school as well. And basically, if uh, families that were affected by the war, let's say the, um, a father went to fight and uh, died and gave his life, you know, and then the mother didn't have enough funds or didn't ha wasn't able to get a job because of the depression and everything. If their father was a Mason and um, then they would allow these kids to come to the orphanage for free and, you know, they would they could be part of that. And it really helped these families. Um, my character, Miller. Um, he had a, a brother and a, and a sister, <clears throat> and they went to the orphanage when they were pretty, pretty young, were raised there, and he was uh, just kind of the brainiac. And so uh, to kind of like give perspective, I always say like, you know, he's the uh, like squints from the sandlot. You know, he's the one he, he didn't wear glasses, but he <clears throat> he loved uh, loved math and loved physics and. Uh, Miller himself went on to become a, a nuclear physicist, I believe, um, if that's the correct terminology. I know that he uh, was a professor at TCU, actually teaching, and um, worked with Albert Einstein, worked on a lot of these huge projects and helping with things, worked on the Manhattan Project, actually. Um, and there's a book about Miller. So I was very fortunate to have to be able to uh, take on this man and his life and and there's so much information out there about him. So I was actually able to do, you know, quite a bit of research and, and find out all these great cool things. And he's got family members alive today that I've spoken to and it's kind of surreal, you know what I mean? But, um, so back, you know, with this home, <clears throat> the coach Rusty Russell showed up, um, took the job and these kids, I mean, were, were extremely poor instead of a football, they used like a, a flower can wrapped in a sock. And that was their football because they didn't have any equipment. They didn't have anything. But, you know, they had the passion to want to play. They had the want to. And and this coach was an orphan when uh, when he was, you know, young. And he kind of instilled in these kids, just because you're here, it doesn't mean you can't go somewhere. You know, the, you know, don't don't let anything stop you and kind of inspired them brought to them together on the field and they just, they had something to fight for. So they just went on to win and win and win. And they would actually, you know, it was kind of cool. They, um, to get equipment when they'd go play a team, it'd be like, all right, here, if we win, we get your old practice jerseys. Or it's like, if we win, we get to keep the game ball. Right. And that's how they kind of got their equipment and stuff. Cause they didn't have a lot of money for funding and stuff. So yeah, that's I'm an oversharer, so I'll talk and talk and talk. But <laughs> it's cool. No, that's that's great stuff. And you know, uh, you've shared you shared some photos and things like that, being on set, behind set, and things. What was that like for you to be on set with um some great actors and just a great team of production to put on such a good movie? It was a, a culture shock for me because I had um. I've always done theater, right? So I've always been on the stage, not really in front of the camera. I, I, I had done a few local things, but this was the biggest thing I, I guess I had booked yet. Um, it, it was just it was just an absolute blast. Um, uh, all of us, uh, 12 guys, were always kind of kept together. And our, we had trailers, you know, that we stayed in on set um, and then in the hotel room and everything. And, and of course, these, you know, the big, the A-list actors are were kind of, in a different area but once we got to set it was i mean they're a co-worker you know at that point it's yes yes there is that sense of like surrealness like holy cow they're standing right in front of me but at the same time you know i i, I gotta focus because they're here to work you know they're not here to sign autographs or take pictures they're here to work right and so <clears throat> it was a really cool thing very humbling for me 
and just got to learn so much just sit back and I learned more just watching them do their thing than than anything and seeing how they as soon as that they say action as soon as they you know click the marker it, it, it's like a switch you know we'll, we'll we'll go straight from yeah man that was really cool it was cool 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 you know and then they're there it's still, and then it's like learned a lot from them and and the camaraderie was wonderful uh martin sheen um ended up being one of my closest people on set um uh, he was really close with all of us guys but we had lunch nearly every day we'd go watch football in his trailer i mean he was just a just a really great guy who was nice to everybody just took the time to say good morning to everybody um some of the football scenes where they're on the field he, you know he's standing on the sideline with the coach and the extras are all behind him as the crowd and in between takes and such he would turn around and just hey good morning how are y'all doing and just go talk to people you know just get to know people and so um <clears throat> you hear these hollywood horror stories where these people are so difficult to work with and and things like that but not a single person on set had a bad attitude or or um thought they were above anybody else i mean everybody it was such a team effort so and and i mean you got 12 dudes that are anywhere from at the time 18 years old to 23 so it's nothing but cutting up you know <laughs> right right hey I, I love it having fun on set and as you mentioned cutting up you know doing stuff on snapchat or whatever you can yeah how how did you adjust from you know acting in local theater to film you know it's a lot of people will say oh you know it's the same thing you're acting and it's like it's not when Very those light cameras actions you know when it's there it's there so it is an adjustment how'd you adjust i would i'd say like especially you know my agent lydia we've done um workshops and and classes working on that and then i've been to a few workshops um up in New York and such, it, <clears throat> the, I'd say the biggest difference, at least that people will tell you and that I've noticed on stage is it's a lot bigger and on camera, um, that camera is right here. So if you try to be as big as you are on stage, it, it's gonna be like you're over at your, it's like, you know, tone it back a little bit. Um, and you can <clears throat> really just focus on, on having that intimacy in the moment with whatever scene you're doing because the camera's going to pick it up you know what i mean whereas on stage i might have to be a little bigger because the audience is you know x amount of feet away from me um as far as adjusting to it really i just i am a i consider myself a sponge in whatever situation i'm in so i just would sit back and watch them and soak up as much as i could of course i'd had the, the training and everything so and, and the audition process. So I'd been in front of a camera multiple times, but you know, just I'd read a script and be like, I, I'd read someone's scene and I would say, okay, if I was in this position, how would I do it? And I would think about how I do it. And then I'd watch them do it. And I would be like, oh, okay. They didn't do that as big because, okay. You know, I just watch and learn really. Um, and I, I'd say the biggest thing that you can do, the best thing that you can do is just be directable. They always talk about, you know, being being able to take direction. And that's such a big thing that especially nowadays directors look for. If they ask you to change it and you can't, then it's, you know what I'm saying? That you got to be able to change it. And so instead of, you know, when they say cut, instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, this, and this next time, just clear your head let them tell you soak up whatever they tell you and then adjust it you know because kind of like that um when you're having a conversation with somebody and when they're talking and you're if all you're doing is thinking about the next thing you're going to say you're not really listening to what they're saying you know right i would say you know the biggest thing just kind of watching and learning and drawing it back a little bit and letting it be real not put on you know it's kind of one of those things where you find yourself living in the moment and the camera's just on the wall picking it up, you know? So, yeah. <laughs>